Hello and welcome to the Sacrament of Confirmation, Sealed with the Holy Spirit, Defenders of the Faith. This is our second video presentation this year, and um, please make sure that you have your pen and paper handy so you can jot down some notes. We do have some giveaways in class, and uh, I invite you all to pray with me, uh, and we begin. the serenity prayer in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference come holy spirit fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love amen all right let's review the last time we got together which was two weeks ago and uh, at that time, the gospel was the Feast of Christ the King, um, Christ the King of the Universe. And, and this is a great example of that concept of R3 that I kind of introduced uh, a, a few weeks ago. It's the remind, reaffirm, and redeem. Not to be confused with RG3, who uh, is the quarterback of the Washington Redskins. But I digress again and again and again. Um, this is a fantastic gospel because uh, the good thief is the teacher here and he is um, basically instructing the, his criminal in arms, so to speak, um, on, on how he should behave. So his cohort there on the other side is like, dude, you saved others, why don't you save yourself? But he's rebuked by the good thief and he says, do you not fear God? Do you not know who this man is? And he goes to explain that they've done everything to deserve their crucifixion, but Jesus has not done anything. And so he speaks directly to Jesus when he says, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He's reaffirming his faith, his hope, and his love in, in Christ. And then Jesus turns to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. Um, and the good thief is redeemed. And again, I just want to bring this up as just a, a good example of we need to constantly think about how Scripture reminds us how we're given opportunities to re uh, reaffirm our, our love for God and, and that it is the will of the Father that we are in heaven with Him. The other thing we talked about are the 12 truths of the creed. Um, we broke them down into God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We talked a little bit about the church. Um, and it's important that you guys do some work on your own to understand and unpack the truths that are present in the creed. We ought to know what they are if we are to defend our faith. We ought to know what it means when we say uh, we believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We ought to know what that means. We ought to be able to explain it, not only for ourselves, but in case somebody asks us, um, perhaps on a final at the end of the quarter. I don't know. All right, moving on. All right, so we're going to try and answer the question, what is confirmation? And we're going to start big and then hopefully narrow it down to a couple key items. Confirmation, first and foremost, is one of the seven sacraments of the church. Um, it is the second sacrament of initiation. It is a sacrament of initiation. Well, what's a sacrament? You might remember that a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. Um, you also uh, know that a sign is something visible, something tangible. Uh, for example, a stop sign, it tells you exactly what to do. You, you see the sign in and you stop. Unless you're Andrew from New York, you just downshift and, and go right through it. Uh, nevertheless, um, when, it, when we're talking about the sacraments in terms of the church, sometimes what happens is not visible. But we can say that it is efficacious. It does what it intends. And we can look at the sacrament of baptism to give us an example of how this works out. If you're looking for a tangible sign, a visible sign, it's water. Water was used um, in the olden days in, in, in the history of, of the Israelites as a sign of purification, a sign of cleanliness. Actual word baptism means to emerge. Um, 
obviously there are other fantastic benefits of water uh, but the grace that is bestowed is the idea that we are cleansed of original sin and for that matter all sin when we are born so the outward sign is the um, the, the dumping or the immersion into water three times with the uh, blessing of the Trinity and the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen and the grace we get from that is the removal of original sin. And what does that look like? It means that we are uh, taken in as adopted sons or daughters of God, that we become members of the body of Christ, and that we're once and for all marked spiritually uh, with that indelible mark, saying that we are God's creatures. And confirmation, then, would be the perfection of our baptismal gifts. Well, this means that we are given some infused virtues, um, when we are baptized, and those would be faith, hope, and love, as well as some of the cardinal virtues, which are prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. They are called infused because they are gifts from God poured into us at baptism and virtues because they are powers or capacities to love God rightly in the various situations of our mundane human existence. Just kidding, it's not mundane. Um, we are given these at baptism. They are perfected with confirmation and strengthened through Holy Eucharist. Those are the sacraments of initiation, and they're called initiation because they lay the foundation for every Christian as we are invited by Christ to be redeemed. But we must accept the invitation, be active participants in the life he has carved out for us. Confirmation is necessary for the completion of the sacramental graces given at baptism. I know that's a lot to swallow. Uh, we'll Confirmation, then, we could say, is um, a spiritual maturity. Of the seven sacraments instituted by Christ, confirmation is probably the one that is least known or appreciated. And we kind of can get an understanding of that because it focuses on the workings of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is forgotten person of the Trinity. The sacrament of confirmation can be described as a sacrament of spiritual maturity. It enriches the soul of the person with deep graces, that's help and assistance, or God sharing his life with us, of the Spirit. Confirmation is the sacrament that calls recipients to witness courageously the gift of faith by word and especially by the example of their lives. We look at uh, Vatican II's dogmatic constitution on the church, and, and it says... Catholics are more perfectly bound to the church by the sacrament of confirmation and the Holy Spirit endows them with special strength so they are more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith both by word and deed as true witnesses of Christ. That's really what you're saying yes to. You're saying that I'm willing to do that given the capacity that you have of given me. Um, how do we know about confirmation? Well, uh, this sacrament harkens back to the great Pentecost event. We can look into Acts 2, when the disciples were huddled in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus had promised them, came upon them in the form of a mighty wind and tongues of fire. The disciples gathered there. Um, they were commanded by Jesus to take the good news of his death and resurrection to the ends of the earth. Yet those gathered there up to that point really lacked an understanding of what Jesus' life and death fully meant. But at the Last Supper, Jesus assures them that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and teach them all they need to know. They would be strengthened to go everywhere, proclaiming Jesus as Lord and Savior. Pentecost was the moment of their confirmation. So we said that we were going to be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or sealed with the Holy Spirit, to defend our faith. At the Confirmation Mass, the bishop will hold out his hands above the confirmandi, invoke the Holy Spirit, and then seal them with sacred oil. Um, and those are the outward signs. Um, but what happens is that we're given gifts, and these gifts um, are wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. 
And if we take those and we look at them in terms of the apostles in that upper room, they needed these things from the Holy Spirit so that they could better understand, better speak, better evangelize what God was telling them to do through his son, Jesus. Go out to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember, I will be with you always. He is always with us in the Holy Spirit. The, these gifts of the Spirit perfect the um, virtues and enable us to live more virtuously and love God more perfectly. Wisdom perfects charity in order to judge divine things. Knowledge perfects the virtue of hope. The gift of counsel perfects prudence. The other three gifts perfect virtues of the will and the appetites. The gift of piety perfects justice in giving to others that which is their due. This is especially true in giving God what is his due. Fortitude perfects the virtue of fortitude. I know that sounds funny, but when we look at it and facing dangers and those temptations, we need help. And fear of the Lord perfects temperance. Temperance is making sure that we're strong enough to handle something. Um, so fear of the Lord perfects temperance in controlling disordered appetites and passions. All right. I know that that was a lot of information to throw on you uh, in terms of theological heaviness uh, of all that stuff. If we have to break it down, your role in, in this whole confirmation process is pretty, pretty simple. You need to ask yourself, how's your relationship with Christ? Do you have a relationship with Christ? And is that relationship, is the foundation of that relationship, based on his invitation to pick up your cross and follow him, through prayer, mass attendance and participation. Um, that's important. I think there's, you know, like 168 hours a week. And one of those hours you're spent at mass. Well, what are you doing at mass? Are you just going through the motions? Or are you actively participating? Are you singing the songs? I sit in the back because I sing and I'm horrible. And I know that it's a cross that many people have to carry who sit around me and I don't I don't want to be up front where Father Freitag can hear me and just I can I just can tell is probably start crying um, are you going to the sacraments reconciliation it's what it's all about your sins are forgiven when you come out oh look at a little rap right there get down um, in order to go to mass and be an active participant you need to get to reconciliation you need to go to penance you need to clear your conscience and get your head right, get in the game, in a state of grace. But I think more importantly, not more importantly, but just as importantly perhaps, is what's your life away from Mass? What are you doing those 167 hours during the week? And most of you are probably sleeping. Uh, how is your life at school? Maybe some of you have a job. Maybe some of you are on sport teams. How does it reflect what um, Father says? Go now and preach the good word. This Mass has ended. Go in peace. Mass may have ended, but our obligation continues. So it is a action um, oriented uh, sending, if you will. Um, the other thing is that you must be making this decision for yourself, not your parents. The, your parents are not going to tell you to do anything that, that is counterproductive to your, to your life in, in terms of faith. Um, they want you to get confirmed. That's why you're here. Or you may want to get confirmed. And it's certainly in line with the fourth commandment of honoring your mother and father. But you really want to do this because you want to continue to respond to Christ's invitation of picking up your cross and following him. And it's not easy. Nobody said it would be. Um, it's hard. There's temptation abounds. Um, but I think in life, we get the opportunity through the sacraments to keep hitting that reset button, keep converting, keep changing our life to make it more ordered to God's in terms of how he wants us to live. I mean, God's will is simple. He, and, I, and I don't say that in a presumptuous or blaspheming way. 
but through revelation he tells us that he wants us to spend eternity with him. he wants us to love him that's his will um, now the day-to-day -day things I, I don't know I'm not a sage but we have to make sure that we are moving that direction the gifts of the Holy Spirit help us do that the graces the sacramental graces that we get from that allow us to conform our lives to that of his sons and we get opportunities to make amends at each turn so long as we're looking for him I don't know if any of you have seen the 2012 release of Les Miserables uh, I don't even speak French but that's how it came out just now anyways there's a little clip I want you to watch from that and you know put yourself in the various roles now, obviously there's maybe there's a server there's the bishop there's the thief um, and there's some guards put yourselves in those th those roles and, and ask yourselves these questions you know how is Christ speaking to me hey Come and suffer, you are weary And the night is cold out here Though our lives are very humble What we have, we have to share There is wine here to revive you There is bread to make you strong a bed to rest till morning, rest from pain and rest from wrong. Bless the food we eat today, bless our dear sister and our honored guest. We have your silver. We caught this man red-handed. Get the nerve to say you gave him this. That is right. But my friend, you left so early. Surely something slipped your mind. You forgot. I gave these also. Would you leave the best behind? Monsieur, release him. This man has spoken true. I commend you for your duty. Now God's blessing go with you. But remember this, my brother. See in this some higher plan. You must use this precious silver to become an honest man by the witness of the martyrs by the passion and the blood God has raised you out of darkness I have saved your soul for 